Hello, welcome to ES346 Basic Thermodynamics. These are examples, and the problem today is an unsteady open system. I'm Rourke Peterson. Here's the problem we're going to solve here. We have a pressure cooker. It is initially half full of liquid by volume. And the question asks, what is the highest heating rate that will permit the cooker to not run out of water in one hour? So over on the right here, we have a diagram, and we see it's half full of liquid by volume. The volume is, total volume is 4 liters, and the pressure is 175. And the way a pressure cooker works is there's a weight on here which restricts the outflow of material out to maintain a constant pressure inside there. So this pressure of 175, it's constant during the entire process. So let's look at this um, on a PV diagram. We have a mixture, so clearly we're dealing near the saturation curve. So we'll be using table values instead of the ideal gas law. And let's draw this on a PV diagram since we know the pressure. And look at where the process is. And so we've got an initial state and a final state. So let's help kind of diagram where those states are. It'll help us solve the problem. And so initially, um, I've got half by volume liquid over vapor. And so I know that I'm going to be somewhere in the mixture region. And the question is, where am I in terms of quality? The quality is 0 on the left-hand side. Quality is 1 on the right-hand side. Well, remember, the definition of quality is the mass of the liquid over the total mass of the system, or the mass of the liquid over the mass of, oh, I'm sorry, this is the mass of the vapor, m sub g. So the mass of the vapor over the total mass, which is the mass of the vapor over the mass of liquid plus the mass of the vapor, or m sub g. So. That's what my quality is. If I look up on the um, here, um, I realize that if half of the volume is liquid, that's essentially all of the mass because liquid is all on the order of about a thousand times more dense than than vapor or or so, even at 175. So my initial state is going to be way over on the left hand side, really close to that. So there's going to be 0 0.1. And then the end of the process, I'm going to have all vapor inside here, no liquid, which means my quality is going to be 1. I'm going to be over on the right-hand side. And this is all at a constant pressure of 175. So here's my process going from point 0.1 to point 0.2. So I've got one intensive variable for both states. Now I know the pressure. And I can get a second intensive variable if I know, for example, the value of V or the value of X. And in fact, I do know X. X over here is going to be equal to 1, and it's going to be some really small number over here on uh, the left-hand side. All right, so let's go ahead and, and write our energy balance, because that's how we're going to get Q. That's the only way to get value of Q is from energy balance. So my energy balance says the change in energy is the energy that goes in minus the energy that goes out. And that's the same energy balance for every single problem that we'll solve in thermodynamics. And now let's go ahead and write the form of this in terms of thermodynamic variables applicable to this system. We have an open, unsteady system. If I draw my boundary being the pressure cooker, I clearly have material leaving the system, so it's going to be open. And so the correct form would be M2 U2 minus M1 U1. There's my change in energy, the final state of energy, the initial state of energy. The energy that goes in, in this problem, the only arrow going crossing my boundary there is Q in. And the only arrow crossing going out is the material that's leaving. So that'll be M going out. I'll call it ME for F exit. And I'm going to quantify that with the energy with enthalpy since it's crossing the boundary. I'm using internal energy over here because that material remains inside the boundary. This material leaves, and so I quantify its energy with enthalpy. So there's my energy balance, and I need to solve for QN. I need to know how much heat goes into that. So I need to determine all of these other values, these thermodynamic properties, and these mass using my understanding of the process that's occurring in this problem. So let's go ahead and start off at point 0.1. As I said, we know our pressure is 175 at point 0.1, and we'd like to know what the quality is. Well, let's kind of we can kind of shortcut this if we look. The quality is the mass of the vapor over the total mass, and almost all the mass is in the liquid phase initially, and so. I'm pretty safe to say that X1 is essentially zero, which lets me say that the internal energy initially, U1, is essentially U sub F, which is the internal energy of a liquid at 175. 
So let's go ahead and get that value, and we get all these values on the property tables for this problem because we're dealing with right here underneath the saturation curve. And so I'm going to go to my property tables and go down to properties of saturated water. And uh, a little further down here. Um, so here's saturated water in terms of temperature. We're given the pressure, so it'll be easier if I go to table A5 and look at it here. And so now I'm down at 175 kPa. So here's this line. And I'm looking for the value of an internal energy of a saturated liquid. And I realize that that is 486.82. So come over here, and that is going to be 486.82 units of kilojoules per kilogram. All right. Um, let's just kind of keep plugging away at some of these. And so we need to find the initial mass. What is M1? Well, the, the initial mass of this whole system is essentially just the mass of the liquid, as we were just kind of saying. It's a pretty small error. So we can say that M1 is essentially the mass of the liquid, or M sub F. And I can determine that if I know the total volume of the liquid over V sub F. So that's just the inverse density. So this is going to be the, the total volume of the liquid down here. So that is half of the 4 liters, or 2 liters. Let's convert that to cubic meters. That's 0 0.002 cubic meters. And now I need to get V sub F. I'll get that off the tables. So V sub F at 170. 5, V sub F is this column, 0 0.001057. So, 0 0.001057, and that is meters cubed per kilogram, and that gives me my initial mass is 1.892 kilograms. All right, so that's M1. So I got both of those terms there. Let's go ahead and, and just move right along and go to, to point 2. So let's go ahead and Try to figure out what is U2. So U2, the internal energy at the final state. The internal energy over here, where now I'm on this line, the quality is 1. I'm at 175. That means that U2 is, well, it's the internal energy of a saturated vapor, or U sub G. So, well, once again, we're going to go to the tables to get that. So, getting value of U sub G, 25, 24.5. So, it is... 25, 24.5 kilojoules per kilogram. And moving right along, let's go ahead and get M2. And we can get M2, well, similar to like we did up here with M1, because we've got, it's just a saturated vapor now. So M2 is going to be the total volume over, now it's going to be V sub G, the value of a saturated vapor. And now it's, it's the total volume. So 0 0.004 cubic meters, that whole 4 liters at the final state, and V sub G uh, from the tables is 1.0037. So 1.0037 meters cubed per kilogram. And so there's my final mass. Final mass in the system is about 0 0.004 kilograms. So we pause here for a minute and, and look at this. So our final mass is only 4 grams, 0 0.004 kilograms. And we started off with 1.892. We did a little bit of approximation saying we could neglect the vapor up here. And actually, you could probably realize that, well, there's only about 1 gram per liter. So this would be 1.892. Instead of that, it would be at 1.894. Um, clearly, there's, there's not much of a, a, an error in what I did with that approximation. So let's we'll leave it at 1.892. It's only off a couple points out of 1,000 there. OK. Um, M1 and U1 are taken care of. M2 and U2 are taken care of. All I need are, are these two terms on the right-hand side of the equation. So to find the mass that's exiting, I'm going to get that from a mass balance. Well, how much mass leaves? Well, I, I can know how much I started with. Which was M1. I know how much I had at the end. That's M2. Clearly, the difference between those two is how much leaves. And so that's 1.888. And that's going to be kilojoules per kilogram. So that's M exiting. So now, if I can get my one last thermodynamic property, H exiting, I'm, I can use this to solve for QM. So now I'm finding the enthalpy over here. And hopefully, you recognize that enthalpy leaving is that of a saturated. Vapor, it's always going out the top here. 
And so I need H sub G off of the tables. Let's look across here. H G is um, oh we're at 175 and it's 2700.2. So 2700. Point two kilojoules per kilogram and now we've got everything up here except QN so now I'm just going to take all those values we just computed plug it into my energy balance there and find QN and arithmetic on that says it's 4187 and my units are going to be kilojoules so that's how much energy went in to boil all that liquid into vapor and to finish out the problem it says what's the highest rate and so what I want in is actually a rate, which is QN, or Q dot, which is going to be QN over some period of time, which is one hour. So that 4187 kilojoules went in in hours. And if we do that in terms of seconds, we'll get a, a unit in terms of kilowatts, because a kilojoule per second is a kilowatt. Do that arithmetic, it's 1.163 kilowatts so so there's the rate that rate right there I will exactly boil away the liquid a lower rate I'll have some liquid left a higher rate and it will completely boil in less than one hour and that completes the problem